All right, we're going to start off slowly, thinking in terms of multivariate functions we've seen before. Do you remember when you learned about curves and surfaces? We looked at parametrized curves, functions with one input, many outputs. Those were nice, made sense. What about parametrized surfaces? Same thing, just now you've got two inputs. And you can really see those, you could draw pictures of that. But that's not all. We've also looked at implicit curves, where we set some function of two inputs equal to a constant. And if you vary that constant, then it fills up the plane with these implicitly defined curves. Now, the same thing in 3D. Have a function x, y, z, set it equal to a constant, that's going to give you a surface. If you look at all possible values of that constant, that's going to fill up three-dimensional space with these implicit surfaces. That's a great way to visualize a function with three inputs and one output. Now, sometimes you can use things like color or density to visualize. Here's the image of a function that has four inputs, x, y, z, and time, and then two outputs representing color and density. You could do things like that. Now, that's not all. Multivariate functions often have position or time as inputs, and this makes a lot of sense in certain physical contexts, such as the weather. If you think about uh, latitude and longitude as inputs, and then temperature as an output, you might get those implicitly defined curves. Or maybe we have temperature and pressure. Or maybe we can add things like the wind. Which way is the wind blowing and how hard? Now, all of these things can be visualized and put together into a nice picture. I could think of curves where the temperature or pressure is constant. I can represent the wind blowing by drawing vectors at every point in space. And all of these things are changing over time. You can really get creative when you're trying to visualize functions with many inputs and many outputs.